Okay, so today we're going to talk about the peripheral nervous system as it relates to a massage therapist. And just to show you the flow chart of the peripheral nervous system, again, as complex as it seems, it's not that bad. Um, we do have the central nervous system that is on the other side. So we have the central nervous system, peripheral nervous system, but we're only going to talk here because we're going to break down more of the somatic side of the nervous, of the peripheral nervous system. We also have the autonomic nervous system in that automatically happens, we don't have to think about it, so it's regulated and controlled more. And um, as massage therapists, we like to spend a little more time in stuff that we hopefully can affect. And uh, yes, we have a grand effect on the autonomic nervous system, but I want to talk about the 31 pairs of spinal nerves. Now they're way over here, so I want to make sure 31 pairs of spinal nerves um, starting at the cervical or neck we have C1 all the way to C8, which if you know your vertebrae, we only have seven cervical vertebrae, so why do we have eight? Um, I can't tell you. You might have to ask uh, uh, someone once you get where you're going in life and say, uh, you know, why, why do we have eight? I'm not sure, but I will tell you there are eight cervical nerve roots, and two of them come out right around the area of C7. So it gets a little crowded in there. In fact, if you look at the the spinous process, and if you, even if you poke on it a little bit, you'll feel that it's a little bit more sensitive. Um, we will say that all of these spinal nerve roots, by the way, I forgot this part, um, all of these spinal nerve roots are what are called mixed nerve roots, and they have both a sensory and a motor portion, so they will bring information into the spinal cord and return information via the motor section. And so we're going to leave some of the big words out, but we're going to say sensory and motor equals mixed. And all these 31 pairs are mixed. So we have cervical nerve roots C1 to C8. And I'm going to spend just a few minutes here because the cervical nerve roots are very close to the surface of the skin. So if I get closer to you, I will say if you, if you go from your ear hole or your, you know, external acoustic meatus, if you really are keeping track at home, and you follow it down and you'll feel these bony prominences called transverse processes. Now if you want to see them in a skeleton, there you go. These transverse processes um, are very superficial in the cervical region and we also have nerve roots coming out. In fact, very, very interestingly, a little bit different than other places in the body, we actually have um, uh, an artery that is pretty proximate to um, these nerve roots. So it can be a little painful as you poke here. You've got to poke gently. In fact, I often start by doing an unspecific, right? Working with my palm to see if there's any sensitivity with my palm and then working my way possibly into the flats of my fingers. So knowing that the cervical nerve roots are close to the surface of the skin, we also can get to know the where, where they're going to travel. And we have uh, uh, what are known as plexuses or networks of nerves within the cervical um, nerve roots. We have C1 to C4, which is considered the cervical plexus. And, and more than anything, I want everyone to know um, that uh, there's one major nerve that comes off of that. Now, there are a number of nerves, okay? But if we say we have nerve cervical nerve roots, C1 to C4, we have one major nerve everybody and their brother should know. It's called the phrenic nerve. And that is spelled P-H-R-E-N-I-C because P-H-R-E-N, diaphragm, does that sound familiar? The phrenic nerves go into our diaphragm. And um, it's always a hard word to spell. I may have misspelled, I think, D dia, put a G in there, fram. So D I A P H. Diaphragm is the muscle that is really thin. It separates your thorax from your abdomen, and it's responsible for uh, moving up and down, making way in the lungs, pushing the abdominal contents out of the way, breathing. Uh, yeah, pretty important. So the phrenic nerve is going to dive down and uh, come off of the first, or actually two, three, and four nerve roots and drop, dive down into the, the chest, uh, through the chest, I should say, and into the diaphragm. So extremely important. So that's the cervical plexus. 
the very, very, very well-known C5 all the way to C8 and ultimately T1, which we have talked about the thorax, this is known as the brachial plexus. And if you know your nerve, I'm sorry, if you plexus, if you know your regions of the body, brachy, B-R-A-C-H-I, means arm. And a lot of times it can refer to the upper arm, but in this case we're talking about a network of nerves that go down into the arm. And starting at C5, C6, C7, C8, and T1, there are five, that's your key word, or your key number. Starting at C5, we have five nerve roots. All right, there's your number five nerve roots. I just write roots which you probably can't see anyway, five nerve roots that are going to start at C5, five nerve roots that are going to make up five major nerves of the arm, arm nerves. And these five nerves, a lot of people have come up with different ways to remember them. I'll give you an easy one. Some people use RAMUM, R-A-M-U-M, or um, arm. I like that one, maybe even a little better. Um, arm, and we're talking about named nerves that go ulnar, median, axillary, radial, and musculocutaneous. So um, arm, five major nerves coming from the brachial plexus, which starts at C5, all coming off of the majority, I should say, the majority of the nerve roots are coming off of the cervical plexus, or I should say, the cervical nerve roots, C1 to C8. All right, so last two plexuses, um, we do have thoracic, but not really considered a plexus, T1 all the way to T12. The very important plexus, I'm going to have to move over to here, L1 to L5. Really, a lot of people will cut it off at L4, but this is your lumbar plexus. And again, a lot of people will consider, we'll just use sciatic, um, not sciatic, sacrum, S1 to S4. And that's your sacral plexus. And then we're just quickly going to go through these. The lumbar plexus, I'll use blue. Uh, the lumbar plexus, L1 to L5, L standing for lumbar. It is considered our low back. So think of lumberjacks having really strong low backs. But the lumbar plexus actually ends up being an anterior um, group. And in this case, we're talking about major nerves that are known as the femoral nerve. Let's go into your femur, which is your thigh. The obturator nerve. Obturator means to stop up, and it's actually going to go to your adductors. Femoral obturator. And the major nerve that comes off the sacral plexus is your big, bad, everything else sciatic nerve, and that is a posterior nerve that is very easy to find, and we can talk about it later. So get to know your nerve roots. We did the 31 pairs of spinal nerve roots. I'll add in a separate lecture for the cranial nerves because they're a little crazy, but 31 pairs of spinal nerves, and they become major nerves that are both sensory and motor. I hope that helps. We avoid nerves, right? We know that as massage therapists, we avoid nerves, but we will have places where we can help the connective tissue and loosen the connective tissue so that our patients can have free-flowing nerves. That, that may not be the greatest way to explain it, but you don't want to impinge upon any, any structures in the body. And sometimes, I'll give you two very good examples, the very uneven scalene muscles, your brachial plexus runs between your medial and your um, or scalene medius or you know scalene number two depending upon your book and posterior scalene right here and secondly the pectoralis minor all right the brachial plexus runs underneath pectoralis minor so if your pectoralis minor is tight if your scalenes are tight they could potentially bind down on the nerve and you will see that i'll show you from the side in forward head and rounded shoulder posture Thanks for listening.